Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about JNI or the new way of running native code in Java. So let's switch over to my screen here. I have a normal Java project in IntelliJ and we are going to go through how to run this feature and what we are going to take is the latest version of Java, Java 21 and we're going to run a preview feature. So it's not available in Java 21. I really hope it's available in Java 23 which is the long term supported one but so far we need to add some flags. So let's go in to first of my project structure here and see that I can choose uh, 21 as my uh, Java version and I think that is enough for that. Then I need to go into settings and find a compiler. So the Java compiler here and here I also need to say 21 and in this additional command line properties uh, or parameters I need to add dash dash enable dash preview. So I want to add preview features to this one. So that means that preview features will be available compile time, but I also need it to be available execution time. So I need to create a new application here. Let's say that this is test JNI. And I also have modify options here and add VM options. And here I want enable preview as well. So now we can actually sh run the features. And I want to write some code today. So let's see, we have system out print line hello, let's remove that. And in order to link to something in some C library, for instance, we need a linker. So let's add a linker here, linker. And it seems that the linker is not available here. So let's import that class. And it's an Java Lang foreign linker. So we take the linker and we create a native linker here. Next up, we need a method handle. So that is something that we can invoke here, a method handle. And I want to test string length, which is a C function available. So I will take the linker, I will create a down, uh, down call handle. And in this, I need to first find the actual function. So I can do a linker. Um, default lookup. So I will look up from what is available in my system at the moment. And here I will do a find for string len and I will get the result there. So that means that I will get the memory location for string length. Then I need to define what string length actually takes as parameters. So I have this function descriptor here and uh, I want I don't want a void return so I say of so I have a result type and then I have a value layout and the result is a Java long so I can get a long value from that and then you have a value layout of uh, address here so that is what I put in and you can have multiple after this one so you can have this and this and this and this which is all the parameters, but you only have one result value. So the first one is result, the other ones are inputs. Uh, so let's try here. We want to create an air arena. So this arena is a way of saying that within this, we have memory that is allocated externally and will be garbage collected within this context. So arena of uh, confined so we will confine it to this try catch here and I will do a catch uh, we can take throwable T and then do a print stack trace of that so now I have that and uh, so what it's saying here yeah so it's just language features here so let's create a memory segment so now I want to have the memory that I would put in the actual string. So we take that, we take our arena, and then we will allocate a UTF string, and we will allocate, hello, explorers, like 
like that. So now we have a string. Then I will do, uh, we'll get a long back, that's our result, length of the string. And we will pass it to a long, and we will say strl ling, which is the string, the uh, method handle we have up there, invoke, and then we will put in our string. And then we will do len and print that out. If I now run this one, it will, uh, let's see, continue anyway. Uh, it will say that I need enable preview available source release 17. Uh, where it says that it's ah, 17 here. So here we also need to go in and say that we want 21. Uh, 21. Can I choose 21? Project default. Let's say that. So, and we will compile again. So now we can compile it and we see that we get 17 characters out. So what we did was going into project structure and also checking on the modules here and shows the language level to project default. So now we have this little function and we can run something that is already available in the system. So for this case where string length, it's a part of the normal uh, C binary or the C available uh, things in the system. So we didn't really need to add any extra libraries. We didn't have any special library somewhere. But now I want to create my own static library. So let's create a file here. Let's call it foo.h. And here in this file, I will define one function and, and one external foo. So let's see if I can copy paste the data here. So we just define foo and we will have this external foo function. Not, not much in this uh, header file. And then we will create a C file, foo.c, which is actually defined in this function. And just copy paste this here. And here we see that the only thing we do is put a string, hello, I'm a shared library. We can say hello, explorers. I'm a shared library. So everybody knows that this is a shared library. Now we want to compile this. So let's open up a view here, a tool window terminal. And here I want to run GCC. Um, so let's see, we want to compile our C code. And we paste that in here. So here we see GCC compile with all warnings, all errors, uh, fpick and foo. So that means that we have compiled this into an, an, an object uh, library, but we want to make it a, into a shared library. So then we will need to run one more command, gcc shared. The object, uh, the output what we want is libfoo.so. And then we take our object file here. So if I run that, we should have a shared library called libfoo.so. Now I want to run that. So let's create a new Java class here. Uh, lib foo runner. Let's call it that. Create the main function there. And then we will do the same as we did before. We took a linker, created that, new our linker, native linker, like that. Then we will create an area directly here arena direct and we will make it into an arena confined as we had before then I want to do a symbol lookup from our uh, C file or C library so full lib is what we want to look up we do a symbol lookup library lookup and then I will just copy my path here also uh, type in my path. So I will do a full absolute path here. So home, wooden, github, and this library was test j and i, lib food so. So now I have linked to that and then I need to say that this is a part of this arena. So now I can do a symbol lookup that should give us this specific library 
Now I need a method. So method handle foo function. And then we do the linker down called handler. Look that up. Now we want the specific memory address of that. So we do a um, foolib find the foo function and we will get that memory and then we need to describe it the inputs and output so we do a function descriptor of void because we don't have any inputs or outputs so here we could say this is a void returning function but we have these kind of uh, inputs so that we can put in there there as well and then we do a foo func invoke and then we should pretty much be done here right and uh, what do we want more is a cat try catch because it will uh, throw a throwable if something is wrong so let's handle that one and let's run this library and do 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 and we got the issue again that we need to enable preview for this one as well Let's go in here, modify options, add VM options, add the enable preview and run. And we run it. Hello explorers, I'm a shared library. So now we have both created um, just something that could run native code available in the system as libraries and linked already in, into the path. And we also defined our own library that we created compiled it and we also in a, uh, fetched that one and ran a function from whatever we had compiled. It will work just fine with Rust code as well. I built a bunch of uh, Rust um, implementations where we created shared libraries from Rust. That will work just fine as well. But what you see here, the most powerful thing is that we only need to say that this is an external function in whatever what library that we created in and it will be available in Java by a simple lookup from that specific library. So whatever library you have that has external functions, we now can look them up and run them in Java. I think this is really exciting and when this actually released and we are going to start using at work and uh, in my project, I have a bunch of code that I need to rewrite because it's a very clunky solution at the moment with JNI. And in some cases you need to use um, libraries that somebody else wrote because the actual implementation and figuring out how to connect to that uh, specific C code is really complicated. I think this is a huge step forward with simplifying this kind of API. What do you think? Is this something that you need in your work or something that you will use in your day-to-day -day life? Um, please leave a comment about that below. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.